<laughs> We're live. Are we, are we really finally live? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, Hi, I hope somebody comes to join us. I hope they didn't know me. I think oh, I was those eight not people show up. Um, yeah, I've been trying to work some stuff out with epoxy sculpt, which I love. I love this medium so much. There's a little tiny bit of a learning curve for me. Um, because I've just been so used to other things, but it was like that with the cerulean too, you know, so um, I'm learning and you're gonna learn with me and, and I just threw my tool down But let's see what was that? I don't know. Hope I don't need it. Okay guys, so Anyways, anybody joined us yet? Yeah, Rose Castle. Oh Rose, so good to, that you came. I'm so glad. I know I kind of pulled this on you guys at the last minute that it was going to be live, but this is the time of day when we usually make the videos. Here, we can show what the last one looked like. No, it didn't come out that good. <laughs> the last one, we better be honest though, the, <laughs> the last one we did this, this week, last week, came out, I learned a lot of lessons from it, let me tell you that. Um, I learned that if I want to make these little balls and snakes and put them on, I need to do them ahead of time and let them rest a little bit and be prepared to move quickly then because the stuff does cure quick. Um, I mean, it doesn't cure like in minutes, but you know, you have to be prepared to, to have a plan and, and go forward with it. I've got some here that I mixed up about 45 minutes ago and it's starting to get stiff on me. I'm hoping maybe it'll work out for me to go ahead and use it. But yeah, th I mean, this is this is okay for a first attempt. But I, I can't really use it for anything, but um, I said I was going to give it to my mom. I don't even know that I'd do that. But these little holes in it, normally when I do polymer clay, I would set little stones down in here, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So um, anyway, so that's how that came out. It just, it just kind of was too soft and it just kind of uh, smooshed down a little bit. So that needs some work, but we're going to get there and it's going to be fine. We're going to have a really nice time. Um, we're going to have, oh, so I've got people here now when I'm doing video. Well, if you guys hear a little can, bit of... Can you delay it just for a few minutes? No, we're already on. We're oh, okay. live. Go ahead, just do what you have to do and I'll just say, hey, my husband just came home and he's showing an electrician something down here, so we'll just have to... Put up in a real life in the real day of B2. Sorry about that, guys. But <laughs> we're going to have fun anyway. Oh, we're going to learn things fun. together. So I'll tell you what I am finding that I do like about epoxy sculpted is that you can really build dimension with it. I mean, super good. Like, I wanted to do one of these uh, spoon pendants. And you saw the pictures of them before. I didn't do uh, beads on head pins and stuff with those. But... Um, I'm doing that with this one, and you can just beat it as you go, just putting little balls of stuff in there. So I'm going to start, I hate to not finish this one, but I, I think that I need to show you first of all what you do with the spoon, because we did this so long ago, and here I don't, here is my spoon, okay. We did this so long ago, and I do have a video on, if you want to go back about eight years, just go to the search box on our videos and put in spoons. and it'll come right up for you. You'll find it's from about eight years ago. I look completely different, let me tell you what. But anyway, a lot of you weren't with me then, you know, my regular ones now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, I use this spoon, which is on the website. We have it in brass ox, we have it in silverware silver plate, and we have a few in raw too. I used to paint these a lot. They're really cool when you put um, ivory spray paint on them and then distress them. So um, that's another option with them too, but I'm just gonna work with it as brass ox here. So um, anyway, what you wanna do is you wanna cut the spoon handle in half, right about here, right about where you see these three little dots coming. You wanna cut it there, okay? And then what'll it'll happen is you'll have two pendants, you'll have a pendant that you can make like this, and you can have a pendant that you can make from the bowl of the spoon too. And you can do that any way you want. You know, you could do this with mosaic or, or whatever you want you could do, or flowers, whatever. 
but you want to get two pendants out of it. So to do that, what I do is I start with my cutters. Now this isn't a great way to treat my cutters, but I've got to get a line going across. So I'm not going to press down hard, but I'm going to go right through that middle dot there. If you can see me doing it, am, nope. I, am nope. I here? Yeah. So if you can see me doing it, there's that middle dot there. I'm going to go right through there. And what I'm doing is I'm just marking it. See, here's my mark It's being made. Okay, so I'm going to move over this way a little bit so I can be sure that I stay on camera for you. Okay, so there's this line. So that's where I'm going to cut. So how am I going to cut it? Well, we carry these shears. I think we still have a pair left and I have to order them next week. But these shears are our metal cutting shears and they really weren't designed for metal cutting, but they work fantastic for it. And I swear by them. I've got several pair down here in my workshop, let alone upstairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to turn it over so I can see my line. And I'm just going to go through that with these cutters. And you'll see how it just gets right down in there. I mean, it's not going to slide through it like butter, but it works. It gets it pretty good. So as you can see now, i got two of these. All right. So now, the way I'm going to curl my bail, because I can't just use it like that, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to feel over this, and it's a little tiny bit rough, okay? So we're going to have to file that a little bit, but it's easy. You could take your steel wool and go over it and get it done fast, or you can use a little file. If you're going to use a file, this is the way I do it. I kind of place it down, and then I go, well, sometimes I do. I had it down earlier, and it was working better for me. But just go, when you file, always file one way. I'm not the filing queen, so if anybody wants to comment about it, feel free. But I get my stuff out. Usually I use, usually I use the um, steel wool, though. That usually works the best. I just want to get the little burr edge off of that. So there's still one on here, so I'm going to just come this way. And then I might turn it over. Yeah, see, it's a little. I'm just going to go like this. A bigger file might actually be better. Or really, the steel wool. I don't have any here right in front of me, so. But that file's good. Okay, that's smooth enough. You don't have to get it, like, perfect, because you're going to bend that down. No one's going to touch it anyway. It's just, it's just a good idea to, um, it's just a good idea to see. Here's what I meant to do, I'll show you. It's just a good idea to, to do it because you like to have your stuff finished all the way nice you know you don't like to have rough edges in there even if people aren't going to see them you still want to do a nice finish insofar as you can now sometimes if there's dirt in the back of a bezel or something like that you know you can't do anything about it or some plating stuff that balled up a little bit can't do a lot about that that doesn't matter because you're going over it no one will see it but um, anything anybody could possibly see or feel over, you want it to be nice and finished. So that's as about, as, as about as good as I will get it now. It is fine. Okay, so you can see I got it cut a little tiny bit crooked, but that's okay. We can work with it. that. We can deal with that. I'm not going to go cutting it again. So now what I want to do to do my bail is I have these nice bail cutters. And we carry them at the website at bcboutiques.com. And I'm going to take them this way, the smaller bell side up. And I'm going to go about two-thirds of the way back and start bending it. And then I'm just going to really work hard to try and bend it back as straight as I can so that it doesn't, like, go off to the side or something because then you've got to start over. But this is really not hard. So just start bending it, bending it, bending it. And then here, at this junction, you want to bend it forward just a little bit to get a little bit of left in the pendant. And you might even want to take and do that both sides because you might get one done, you know, more than the other. Even on this, I might want to do that. So I'm going to keep bending it. We're about halfway there now. We're getting there. Oh, 
Oh, here's somebody. It says Sweet Romance. That's the person's name. Hi, Brenda. I think I, I saw, once saw you at a trade show years ago. I don't know. Maybe you did. Yeah. We, uh, where did you go? Pittsburgh? Yeah. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Where's she from? I do not know. We will have to question. Darcy's with us. Beverly's hey, Darcy, with baby. Us. Debbie's with us. Yeah, Dame the only is sweet us. romance I know is the lady, what's her name? Shelly Cooper, maybe? That has that line. She's out in California, close by Mel. Oh. Yeah, that's the only one I could think of that I might have seen at a trade show. Anyway. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe we'll never know. she has a nice line, that's for sure. Okay. So now I've got this. This amethyst done fairly well. That's pretty nice. Mm. Can you see there on the side? I wouldn't mind getting that close a little tiny bit more. Just a little tiny bit more. But it's not bad because you're going to probably use chunky chain through here anyway. So it's not going to work its way out. But if you think you might use a finer type chain in here, then yeah, it's got to go down a little bit more. You just have to keep working with it, you know. But this is good enough for us to do a project in. And then we have the other side. And we're going to do the same thing, small bell up, two-thirds of the way down, and start bending. And I'm going to have to do it on both sides because if I don't, I'm going to have a sloppy bail. It's going to want to bend to one side. And I'm going to bend up on it a little bit to give it a little bit of an arc. That's always nice. <laughs> always looks good. She said, did have a line at one time. Who did? Uh, that sweet romance. Yeah, they the sweet romance still has a line. The one out in California does. You can look them up. They make really pretty things. I had a line too. Yeesh. Most of you guys know that. I had a line in the nineties. I sold. I was everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was all handmade. We used made it with little buttons and I keep saying one day I'm going to break down and I'm going to make that little brooch that we sold so many of and show you guys how the to do one? it. No, no. Which one was it? It's my main one. It started out PN-38 I think it was. We sold thousands of them and they were all handmade and it was our best seller and I can still make it. The goal was back then to be able to make it and finish it in 10 minutes. Wow. And it's all an assemblage. So one day, I did challenge myself to see, can I still do it? Because it's been a while. And I kind of do different types of assemblage now. I could still do it. Neat and clean. No glue showing. Everything says that. I felt pretty good about that. But someday, I'll show you guys how to make it. It's just, a, you know, it's like one of, the, one of those things, like, it's, it's mine. I don't save much for myself. You guys know that. I give you guys basically everything. If I know it, I share it. If I don't know it, I still try to share it sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, um, that one I'm like, mm. it's not that they couldn't figure it out. You guys could figure it out by looking at it. It's just, it's like this one was my shtick, you know, my thing, my, my shining moment. And I built that line from nothing. And never dreamed I'd be able to do something like that. And I did. And we had, we were in showrooms across the country. We were in a Calmart out in California, right out by 1928. Uh, we were in all the showrooms going across the Midwest. We were in Boston. We had New York representation. I wasn't in a New York showroom, but we did have New York representation. And we did do New York gift through them, through the reps. We had reps on the road. The, you know, rep groups that we worked with all over the place. We had line sheets and catalogs and sample boards and all the stuff you got to have. But after a while, I just realized that um, it was fun. It worked. I'm glad I did it. But it wasn't working good enough for me to, like, make it my life. And I needed to do something else. And that's when I went into supply. And I started teaching eventually. So, um... I'm happy where I'm at now, but there's just a few little things from those days that, yeah, this part's hard a little bit. This yeah. piece, this piece is a little harder. This piece is the easier one. So anyway, I'm just going to kind of do it, and if it's not perfect, I'll come back to it. But anyway, you can see. Okay, 
It's fairly straight. I wish it was over this way a little bit more, but it's not bad. But anyway, this is really nice to do like, I think this is um, 13 millimeter maybe. Kind of looks like it. It looks like it. Yeah, I think I'd have to measure. I think it's 13 mil. You can just set a cab stone in there and be done with it. Really beautiful pendant. You could add a little bit more antiquing on it. Or what I would like is maybe a little bit of like patina colored antiquing. Like, you know, with uh, use your tur turquoise ink of gold maybe. Or on the high spots here and then wipe it off. Dry brush it on, wipe it off. Um, or you can use a little bit of Gilder's Paste. We don't carry that anymore. I'm not the hugest fan in the world of Gilder's Paste anymore, but there are times when Gilder's Paste is the right thing to use. And something like this, I would say it might be. So if you have some, um, that might be a good thing to do. Or just a little bit of paint on the end of your finger, like right here, and just wipe over it, you know, very gently. And then wipe off and, you know, wipe on, wipe off until it looks like you want to and you get some coverage of it. This will be a beautiful pendant. You just stick it on a chain. If you want to add a few beads going up the sides, that's great. Um, however you want to do it. Now, just to show you what I did with my other end on my other spoon is I took a ball of epoxy sculpt, stuck it down in there, started jamming stuff into it. And I was in a big hurry today, and I didn't think about all my rules and all the things I learned from working with Paul, Paul and Clay, from working with uh, Sarah Loon, from working with this last week. All those rules, I just forgot about them, and I did dumb things. And I made just a little bit of a mess. It's not the worst in the world, and I can fix it, but I'm going to have to fix it with glue. Which, that's not the point. If you're going to use epoxy sculpt, you don't want to be fixing it with glue. You want to be doing epoxy sculpt so but this is okay um it's pretty you know i use these are from 1928 i think we have them at the site now if you guys go looking for me you do not see them please uh say something to me i would love to know and i will give a holler over there to the factory and have them send me some more okay they're all handmade so they're really pretty nice pretty pretty unique okay so that's that all right so now i got my two pieces Okay, I showed you what I did with that one. Now, I'm going to show you what I am doing with this one. And what I used to normally always do, I'll just show you this first part. I used this piece off the website. Javier will get you the uh, SKU number for it and put it at the bottom later. If she doesn't have time, I will later. But anyway, I get this. We have them in all kinds of colors. And I just bend down in the middle. I start to manipulate a little bit. See, this is the stuff I know. <laughs> is the manipulating of brass and doing assemblage and all that. This is where I shine. It's my dealio, you know. So I, I, bend, I bend this down. So it kind of makes um, a little bit of a cup, you know. And then I sit it down in there and see if I've got it right. And I do. It's just about right to go ahead. Now, I want to be sure that I have enough dimension going on here that um, I have it sticking out over the edges just a little bit and show you see I've got some here it's not sticking out much but just enough so I can put some little twinklers or pearlies or whatever in those cups that are in because it has little cups on the end so I'll take my little pick-me-up tool and I will place a few little things in there later on but I don't need to show you how to do that you guys know how to do that so Anyway, and I don't, I didn't bring the stuff down here to do it anyhow, so anyways, I don't think I did. So anyhow, but anyway, you want that to stick out a little bit. So then uh, what I do to get this in here, and this is what I like about the epoxy, although this is getting a little stiff now, so I don't know how far I'm going to get with it. I'll just try to manipulate it now because I mixed it up a little bit ago. You have about an hour before it starts toughening up. You can, you can still use it after that too. But it just won't take detail and work because it won't cooperate with you as well. That's what I want to say. I'm just going to take a little piece of it and I'm going to roll it. And right now at this point, no, I don't have gloves on. I don't have to have gloves on at this, at this junction, juncture, whatever you want to say. Because the part where you really need to be protected from the resin in it is when you mix it. Because that is the chemical process when you mix it. So... Always want to glove up when you mix it. If I was to take my epoxy sculpt and start, you know, 
getting out another ball of it and using it, then I would absolutely, surely, you know, have those gloves on. But I don't need them on right now. So I'm going to take this. And this is actually, you know, actually, I'm going to take a little bit of that off. I don't need that much. Less is more in this case. You don't really need that much to get what you want to do with this. In fact, I could even take a little bit more off. So I have kind of like a little, oh, I would say eight millimeter ball, eight to 10 millimeter ball on it, and stick it right there in the middle, right there in the middle, like that, okay? Then I'm gonna take this piece and I'm gonna stick it this down over that as far down as I can get. You can see even the epoxy sculpt is starting to, you know, beat up in the middle there and come out. That's good, you want that, okay? So we're gonna do that. Now, what I was doing was on this one, I'm gonna show you the process of how I um, put this together. Okay, I use ball and head pins. We have not, lots of nice ones now at the website and they're kind of a little bit longer than usual, which is very nice because sometimes you wanna take, you might wanna take and manip manipulate them and do all that kind of stuff, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna put beads on these pins. You see, I've got, see, this is my mosaic box. I encourage every one of you to make your own mosaic box so you have stuff at the ready. And I see I have used all my favorite turquoise flowers out of here already, so I'm going to have to do something else. But that's okay because I can. All right, you can always do something else. Something. Something else. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how I get these little, um, uh, beads onto the the ball and head pin and have them stay there without using a crimp because I'm just going to put one one or two beads maybe on there and I'm not using crimps. Now if you wanted to use crimps and you could get a really good s small crimp that you can round off really nice you don't have any rough edges it doesn't like go like rectangular on you or something Go ahead. You can do it. That's, that's good, too. In fact, I think I have a video from like maybe nine, ten years ago where I did that. But this, in this case, I like to get out my good old E. And I like to try and just use it to get the, the beat on it. So how are you going to do that? Well, I take it about no, just a little bit away from the ball end. I try to get as little as possible on there. Try and see. Here's my... Need some, you need some uh, toothpicks to help do this. Okay, so now I'm going to take just a little tiny bit of that off. Okay, I don't need that much. Just enough to get the stick. And then I'm going to take and bead this up onto that. Okay, I have this dream piece I want to make. And I've gone there kind of sort of a few times. We did kind of a flower basket type mosaic brooch you might remember a couple months ago i'm kind of going in that pattern in here too um, but i want to make like get a basket finding see i pushed that up all the way now i've got a little blurb here i gotta take off that's good it's good ready to go so i'm gonna do a few of them more a few more of them while i'm sitting here talking to you about it but i want to do a really beautiful old-fashioned flower basket pin and i could never find just the right focal or finding to make that work in brass. Now, of course, I could go cut some maybe, you know, with a jeweler saw, bend and manipulate a filigree, some I could do that. But I just never really saw just the perfect right thing that I wanted to do. I could do this an easier way. I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, so now I think I figured that with epoxy sculpt, I could sculpt one. Why not? And then I could find a way to put a pocket in it in the back, and I could have my flowers coming out on wires from the back. And if you can't quite visualize that, then I guess I'm going to have to do one and show you. But I've had that dream of doing something like that for just years. And I think finally I've got a medium where it will work. Because, you know, you could do that with polymer clay. There's no reason why you couldn't. But um, polymer clay doesn't have that stick to itiveness. Like, Poxy sculpt adheres to itself. And there can be negatives about that, but there can be positives in this case. Um, polymer clay doesn't do that. When you set little stones down polymer clay, 
lot of times you have to take them back out if you when you break them when you bake it and reset them with some glue because they're not necessarily in there to stick although I've had a good bit of success with that in the past I really have you know it has worked for me but it doesn't work all the time and most of the, the really good teachers of polymer clay will tell you don't count on it you know they'll say no it may not work for you so I guess you know they know it's their medium but with epoxy sculpt it's just like Seralune it's going to stick you're going to put that in there and it's you're good you're good to go you don't have to worry so um that's what I like about epoxy sculpt you want to set stones or things or you make something from it and put stuff in that is going to stay there forever more Forever more, said the raven. So, anybody saying anything? Looks like there's a bunch of people talking. Are they just, yeah. are they saying hi? Anybody yeah. saying about epoxy sculpt or anything else you've been working on? Any other projects they've been doing lately? Let's hear what you have to say, guys. Uh, some, uh, Darcy said, I love brooch pins. Would love to learn how to make one from your old line. Oh, Darcy wants one. Well, I don't know. I may have to do it just because Darcy wants to. <laughs> Somebody said, I guess I'm going to buy some spoons. LOL, that was Debbie. <laughs> yeah, you won't be sorry you did, Debbie. Um, there, You can make such pretty things out of them. Yeah. Um, go back in my videos. It's a, a several. Oh, this is getting too gorpy. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I hate it when it gets like that. Yeah. I thought maybe I'd work with a, a toothpick and it might go better. But anywho... Oh, and Beans is here. Beans is here. Beans is here to make trouble, I think. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, what a cackle. That's a terrible laugh. <laughs> My dad used to say I had the oh, worst man. laugh in the world. What? Yeah, he did. Who could, Who says that? My dad did. <laughs> Somebody said that. I'm going to be laughing more on your face. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so I got six of them here. That's good enough for a start. I may not get this done while we're together. Because, you know, I like to fuss. Just like when you do assemblies, you like to fuss with it and take your time a little bit. You should, really. Um, assemblies doesn't go together that good that fast. Okay, I'm going to cut part of this off till it's like about like this. You want to show them on camera? Oh. There you Thank go. Thank you. You're, that's your job, you know, Javi. <laughs> you got to tell me that. Yeah. I don't always know. I'm busy trying to do the job here. Okay, so cut it about, about there. You don't need too much. Now, if you were doing a different kind of pen, you might want to leave more on there, but... In this case, no, because you're going to be putting it into the bowl of this spoon. And you don't have a whole lot of room there to do that. So it's not going to be long. Can you make so, a curly cue in there? <laughs> if you uh, wanted to. <laughs> like uh, a little a spiral. Thing? No, not, not, well. Nobody's going to see it. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So, okay. So now I got my stuff and I got this. I'm going to start poking these in now. I may be able to just poke it into what I have here, or I may have to put another blob of epoxy sculpt in there, which is perfectly fine. So it's already bending, which you know what might be fine because I think I want it to bend. I think I'm going to put it down here and let it bend and kind of stick out a little bit. Come on, you. I can clean up any glue later. Just epoxy sculpt, remember, when you're working with it, Keep it, like, keep your hands clean, like, continually get your baby wipes and, and keep your tools clean, especially that. Because you can still get it off your hands, but if it gets on your tools and you forget to take it off, your tools are pretty much wrecked, you know? Because it will, it will dry on there like cement. So that's one good, good thing that it does, but you don't want it doing it in that case, right? No. <laughs> so, okay, I gotta go on this side. Every is like, oh, I couldn't figure out why you were using a head, but now I see it. <laughs> yeah, it's so that yeah. it can come like up a, out of there. I'm building so dimension. Bev is it Beverly Spray? Yeah. Okay, Beverly. I'm building dimension is what I'm mm. doing. That's another reason I like epoxy sculpt. You could do this with polymer clay, but then again, you got that issue where it's That's you'll bake it and it's not going to stick. You know, so you have to take it out and then glue it in anyway. With this, you don't have to. And you can build dimension. So that means I can take little pieces. You can change the color too. <laughs> What's that? I said you could change the color too if you wanted to. You could, but right now we're building dimension. 
So here's what we're gonna do. Take, again, my little, you know, six, eight millimeter sized pea of um, epoxy sculpt, and we'll stick that right there in the middle, right over that other wire I have. That's perfectly fine to do that. And I'm gonna let it stand up a little bit. I'm not gonna smoosh it all the way down because what's gonna happen is it's gonna permit me to build dimension in my brooch and have it stick up a little bit farther, as you can see here. Get that glue off. Now what's nice too to add is like, uh, take a few little sprigs of this and that and stick that in there. I'm gonna see if this will, no, I'm gonna bend this first. I know I'm gonna have to bend, because I'm working on a very small space. And I have to get these little things off, because I see I already took some of it off and used it. That's what's nice about these little stampings, and you work small, you can break them up and get a lot of mileage out of them. You might think not, but you can. Okay, so I'm going to just stick that in there and go sideways. Don't worry if it's going over the top of one of your flowers or something. It just makes it look natural like it would be in nature, you know. Everything doesn't lay flat and leave room for the next guy to it, you know, in nature. No, that's not how it works. So just make it look natural. Okay, I've got this thing, which I got a little epoxy scope. I tried another project, and it didn't work. It got me so flustered. I didn't even bring it down here. But I'll tell you about it in a minute. Because it will work. I'm going to get it worked out. And we're going to do it at the workshop. Erica said, that is stunning. It's stunning. You think so, Erica? Well, I will believe that it is because you said so. How's that? Erica does such nice work. You girls all do beautiful work. Yeah. All of you do. Thank you. Like, I'm, Spectacular. I see what you do and I'm like astounded because I'm like... Geez, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> well, somebody said that you built the mansion and covered the holes in the end of the bead. Somebody said, I don't like seeing the bead holes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's well, you have, to, you have to bury the bead holes. You have to bury them down in there. I don't like seeing bead holes either. Who said that? It was Colleen. Well, Colleen, you are correct. She's correct. I don't like seeing them either. That's like assemblage and beading 101. Bead holes do not show. They should not show. Okay, I got that stuck up there. Now, the only thing that may be an issue for me when I get this all built up, you look down into there and you say, oh, I see white epoxy scalp. I don't like that. Well, you could set some little things down into that, like some little itty bitty chatons or something mm -hmm. down in there. Um, could you put mica powders if you wanted to? You could put mica powder in there and color it. Absolutely. Very good. You would need to do that um, as you're putting it down in there. Oh, okay. I could probably still do it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I could probably still do it. But let's just see how that goes. So I'll get a little bit down here, smush it down there. You'll find, you know, you're going to play with this. This is going to be your project, and you're going to learn how to do it. There's going to be like a bazillion different ways of how to uh, get this worked out. And it's, you know, it's like just about everything we've ever done together. It's a process, and there's not always right and wrong. You know, you just work it. And then, you know, you find new ways. The more you do this kind of stuff, you find newer ways all the time to accomplish what you want to with it. So you learn all the time uh, and say, oh, I didn't know that before, but I do now, you know? Could you have colorized the, the epoxy? epoxy Absolutely. Ahead of time? Okay. Absolutely. And could have, Absolutely. Yeah. That makes sense. I did because I was trying some other things. Mm -hmm. I, had, yeah. I had mixed up a pretty big ball of it. So I just said, but you absolutely could, no doubt about it. Okay. And of course, we, we do have some colors, you know. We have mm -hmm. yellow and blue, blue and red, red. and black, um, white. black and white. And you know, all those colors are colors you can mix to make other colors. Like red and white makes pink, of course. Um, red, uh, yellow, wait a minute. Which Yellow and blue makes green. <laughs> okay, I got I got a little lost there for me. You have to excuse it's my okay. senior moment. 
No, I don't like that. I'll make purple then. <laughs> yeah, you can you can make purple. No, you? but what what makes purple? <laughs> because my brain doesn't. Blue <laughs> and red, I think, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Mm, blue and yep, red. Yep, does that? Yep, you're right. My brain just went. Well, now I I I I like this look, but I'm not sure I'm liking that color there with pink. I don't know what you guys think. I just kind of think that red one. Oh wait, you know yeah, what? Yeah, if you had like a green. I or found a my I found what I really in my heart want. Uh, Ta -da! <laughs> I found I found Beautiful. I found two <laughs> blue ones. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do with these. One of these is, I want to set it kind of sideways like that. I don't need to set this on a pin to do this. What I need is epoxy skull. And here we go again. So I'm gonna make a little, some of you guys may have done this with Cerulean, because you could do this with Cerulean too, but we don't have Cerulean anymore, so we're doing epoxy skull. I'm putting that little tiny bit of white stuff on the back of my bead, because I can, and I'm gonna push that right down into there. Oh, so we get to do pretty stuff, and we're not using glue. And glue wouldn't build this dimension like this does anyway, so... That's that's true. So... Glue gets all glurpy and it's all everywhere. And well, it's like you know, hey, to put dimension, but you it, can't it do works. It. Like, I, I have some stuff I was working on upstairs that, that rats I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to take and do some glue along with the epoxy sculpt. But see, that kind of... I don't know. There's times when you just, you have to. You really do. It just doesn't work. I'm gonna have to go over that cute little chateau. And I don't like that. I might have to get. I might be able to get to that. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> These guys are just gonna have to accept it. That's that's me. I just I get talking. I can't remember what I'm saying. I get distracted. Don't worry. I, I do Somebody the same. remembers. Prompt me, and I'll tell you. Um, I sometimes wonder why you guys come around at all. They learn a lot. I'm so. <laughs> I'm, but you know, well, a lot of people say I'm real, and that's true. I am real. I'll tell you how it is. Okay, so I jammed a little bit more stuff down in there. I like that you used a spoon on a spoon. Huh? You what? used a spoon on a spoon. I used a spoon on a spoon. <laughs> Felt like saying that. <laughs> okay. All right. So I got. I got a couple more here. This could be more balanced than it is. I have to say. It could be more balanced than it is. Than it is. Um, but, you know, we're working fast here. I only have time to fill in full with this. And actually, because I didn't finish this one, I'm going to probably have to finish it with, with glue or work, or I'll have to mix a new batch of epoxy sculpt. But... Because you only have just so much time to work and then you're done. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to... If you could figure out a way to do this with epoxy sculpt, you know, go do it. I'm just thinking that it would be hard not to get it to show. I mean, at least glue is clear. I don't think there's any clear epoxy sculpt in your place. I had a couple. You know, no, that I would be very it. weird looking if it was clear. Oh, well, maybe. They could make it. I mean, but that's kind of hard. <laughs> well, that's what glue's for, I guess. That's true. Okay, that's not going to stay. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to do it the old-fashioned way, which is stick it right down in there. Can you get more? No, not on the ball. Don't get it on the ball. Then you got to clean it off. But at least you can see why you don't want to do that. Because I screwed up. People say they like that too. I screw up and then I show them how to fix it. Because <laughs> we all screw up sometimes. Okay, I'm going to cut this a little bit. Because I don't need a lot of stem to this. Because I'm, you know, working small. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to take another little piece of epoxy sculpt up in here just a little tiny piece and oops and I'm gonna place it up, up under that and I'm gonna try to put this in here so it don't show it might though it might yeah it's gonna show I don't like it me no likey me no likey me no likey okay I'm, so what do I do I'm gonna lift this up 
put it under there. Let it come out from there so I get just a little bit more stuff going on. Bend it down like that. This is going to work after a fashion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to put fill in here so that you don't see that. So what would I use for fill? Pearls would be good. A little pearlies down in there. Why not? You always use pearlies. That would be good. Little leaves. If you have some little tiny little leaves, that would be also another good choice. Ooh, could do. they use those glass leaves? Um, maybe. Oh, that'd be nice you, you, could, you could try it. You just have to be sure, you know, that you, they're the right size. Like, mm -hmm. these little guys, they're only 7 millimeter. you you got to work small. Yeah. Okay. So, you see how that's coming out? So I've got, I got one more here I want to stick down in there. Now I'm going to tell you about my project I really want to do today, but I'm going to have to spend a little more time with it. I have been totally intrigued with broken china jewelry for I don't know how long. And I do know how to make it with solder. I do know how. I don't do it super good, and I don't carry those things to uh, make it, so I have never attempted to teach anyone how to do it. I just don't think, you know, I'm the one to do it at this time, so I suck that right in there, you see. Be good to have another one right there. Maybe I'll go ahead and make one. So, I got to thinking, well, I'm sure this is not original. I'm sure there are plenty of other people thought of this. I'm thinking, why couldn't you, like, make a bezel, like, using epoxy skull? And yes, you can. And I went on um, uh, YouTube and I found some videos on people that were doing like slide jewelry, like the old Sally Jean style slide jewelry with the solder. And um, which I don't know why I say old. There's it didn't go out of style. Just I don't know if she's teaching anymore. She was supposed to be the best teacher. I always wanted to take a class with her and I never did. Um, but, they, yeah, they were using epoxy sculpt around the edges and mushing it down, and it was a cool look. Uh, they were doing it on the slides, you know, the microscope slides that people used to use. I'm like, well, then you could do this with China, too. No way, no, no reason why you couldn't, you know, so you just have to learn to do it right. So what I did that was screwy, I'm going to leave this go, like, at this. You can see kind of the point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to need some fill in here. I'm going to have to put pearls or sparklies in these little holes here. But it's, it's, it's pretty much done. And this one's well on its way to being done, too. So before too long, I'm going to have two of them. Right? I'll go upstairs and do that this evening. Anyway, to tell you my china story, I don't know if I brought that piece of china down here or not. I probably left it upstairs. But anyway, I had bought some broken china off somebody at Etsy. There's quite a few people who have broken china there. If you're going to do that, a little tip. Look for somebody that has pieces that they have broken down really small. Like, no bigger than a 10 millimeter. And if you want to use them in mosaic, they got to be like three or four. So that is really small. But there are people who can do it and have done it and do a good job of it. But anyway, so I found this one lady that did them they were especially made for jewelry. But they were all, you know, chopped up all different ways, you know. And they're not like all shaped perfectly and go all in one shape and look one way. Because that's not how China breaks, you know. It's, it's a broken China for crying out loud. So, anyway. So, I bought them from her. And I loved them when they came. They were old vintage floral plates. that Well, one vintage floral, floral, floral plate that had been chopped up. And, um... I've had them for a long time, and I said, okay, proxy sculpt time. So I thought, how hard can this be, right? How hard can this be? So I went and got a big blob of proxy sculpt and jammed my china pieces down in there. And I found out one big thing right away. And some of you maybe have worked with proxy sculpt before. Feel free to um, say what you would do in this case, because it may be something that's a standard thing that you do, and I just don't know it yet. But... Um, I didn't put them in a bezel. I just put them 
on a big blob free form because I wanted to be able to, you know, use the pieces the way I use them without having to get my tile nippers out because I did get a tile nippers. So that was a mistake because it wanted, I had it on this Teflon mat. It stuck to it. I couldn't pick it up to work on it. I got epoxy scalp all over it. I mean, it was just like, no, I want to cry. I ruined a bunch of beads and rhinestone chain. That's, you know, that's time to cry. I hated that. But I learned, you gotta put it in a bezel. So I was hurrying, hurrying, hurrying to get ready to work with you guys, and I did that. I had this nice 30 millimeter bamboo edge bezel. We have them on the site. I think I just got, no, that's cat hair or something. Yeah, if you have a cat, you want to be careful of that. And you can see what an unholy mess that was. And why did that happen? Because I was nervous and going too fast to try and get down here on time. So work with epoxy sculpt when you're feeling like you want to relax and you have some time, okay? This bezel is still good and I will still use it. I won't use this one though because it's fairly wrecked. Once this is pushed down there that hard, you're going to have trouble getting it off. And it's set for a while. It's not set up, it's set for a while. And it's gotten all around the edge and that. And I know there's a way to clean it up, but it's just like I moved on, you know? One of those things, you make this big mess and you just say, I think for my own sanity right now, <laughs> my own mental health, I'm going to go just move on now. But I found that to do that, you need those little teeny parts and you need to work inside a bezel like my friend Peter Twining does. He's on, uh, he's on YouTube on Treasury Road. He has excellent videos on mosaic. His style is not exactly mine, but it's close enough that, you know, I have learned an awful, awful lot of stuff from Peter, and he's been very generous with his advice as well. And he's also a member of the creative group, so that's also a nice thing. So we hear from Pete sometimes. He's clear over in Australia. He says, someday we're going to have to have a video lesson. He's going to Zoom me or something, and we're going to work together for a little bit and I think I think that'd be a good idea because I could sure use it but anyway for today this is what I worked on the spoon so you need one spoon okay and you're going to cut that spoon the way I showed you down the middle with your metal shears if you, if you have other metal shears use them it's just I've always liked these Linda and Opie O'Brien turned me on to these shears a long long time ago they were very, very uh, popular on the teaching circuit when there were the big art retreat events. They're very, very popular. They are the ones that wrote Metal Discovery Workshop, which if you can find one of those, I don't think it's in print anymore, but if you can find one, buy it and pay whatever you have to pay, whatever you have to pay, because the creativity is there, and they were the first ones to really do a book like that for crafts people like us, and it's all... Not all, but a lot of it's really outside the box, and you're going to enjoy it a lot. But anyway, I used to go up every summer to Linda, Linda and Opie's house. Shelly and I used to go. And we would spend the day with us, and they would teach me stuff. And um, she came out, the first time I went out there, she says, Brenda, you have to have these scissors. This is what Mo Opie and I use. And they knew everything about metal smithing, but this is what they use. have to have these scissors. And so, at time, she gave me the resource so that I could carry them on my website. She wanted me to, which was so generous of her. So we have them, and they cut up to 24 gauge, pretty good, which is the, the weight of uh, brass stampings. So if you need to cut brass stampings, this will do it. Now, if you get the heavy gilding weight stampings, like that's what these would be. These would be gilding weight, heavy, super thick. Then all you can, you know, you, you can still cut it. You saw me do it. But you're not going to want to cut a whole lot of it at a time. You know, it, it's kind of taxing on your hands. So, but mostly it's for, you know, a little bit lighter gauge than I did today. But it works fine for this. It's what I've always used for this. You will enjoy it. If you want a pair of them and you don't see them at the site, please just prompt me. Uh, you can write to Jordan, Jordan at bsuboutiques.com and prompt him. Or you can... Uh, Prompt me on Messenger and Facebook or leave a message on on the on this video. I don't mind. Say, friend, I tried to find the shears are not here. I'll say, okay, we're gonna call somebody on Monday and get them in here. They don't take far. 
don't take uh, long to get because the, the place that makes them, or carries them, I should say, isn't very far from me. So we can get them in a few days and then get them back home, which I intend to do anyway. But if you need to remind me, don't don't hesitate to remind me. I love to hear from you anyway. So anyway, this is what I had in mind for you today. So before I take off, let's look and see. I can't see the iPad from here. So Javi, you're going to have to tell me what they're saying because it looks like here people. Okay, she's going to show me. All right. So... Lisa says, "Oh, nice, yeah, okay." Let's. Whoa, well, we had a lot of we had a lot of talk to talkativity. Deborah Bolduc is here from Quebec. Anita Gale is here. Um, Rose is here. Um, John Brown's home remodeling, which is our, our pal Darcy Brown. She's in California. She's here. Beverly Sprague. I don't remember. Is it Illinois, Beverly? Where you where you live? I can't remember quite. But anyway. Beverly has been a member of the group for a long time. Uh, Deborah again, Sweet Romance. Uh, your video was on my feed. Okay. Huh. I have to look her up. Let's see who else. Debbie. Debbie Nicolaus. She's seen my Sweet Romance on my... Yeah, I think that's Shelly Cooper. Anyway, um, thanks for saying hi, Shelly. Uh, let's see who else. Lisa Marie was here. Squirrel Woman. <laughs> She's the one with the squirrels. Hey, I'm I'm working with Mel on that squirrel magnifying glass, and it is awesome. He's going to give it to us at a really really good price. So I just ha I have to buy fifty of those. So it's, that's always scary. He makes me buy fifty. Won't make them unless I get fifty. But I think that um, at the price I'm going to be able to sell them for, it. I'm not going to have a problem selling them. So I'll probably go ahead and get them. So you squirrel people, hang in there. I'll let you know when you can pre-order. Um, let's see. Rosie, why not? Do you save the cut-off pieces the head pin use for other things? Well, you could, but they're pretty short, Darcy. If they were like a four-inch or three-inch head pin, I'd say, yeah, probably. I don't know. You have to say because you know what? They're Come pretty to think long. Of them. They're 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 pretty short, really. So they're long enough to put another, um, you know, bead on, but there's no head pin on it now. So that's kind of the point of it. So. You can just make a like. A connector from it, like for, with a bead on it, maybe. for the chain part. Maybe, maybe, could be. Well, see now this has gotten a little bit too too hard to work with. Okay, Jeez. so oh, did I see everything? I don't nice know. To know how to fix it. Colleen Bullex, the funky pickle thrifter. Okay, you're new to me. Thank you for coming, Marcy Rainbow. How you doing, Marcy? Thanks for coming. Jacqueline Jordan's here. Margie Lee is here. Sorry, cool. Mrs. Draper. Yeah, we had an odd, an odd time, and I kind of let everybody know at the last minute, so I didn't really expect that we'd have a lot come, but the ones who were here were talkative, and that's sometimes all you need, right? So thank you all for coming. I really, truly appreciate it, and I think I'm going to go clean my hands up and go upstairs and finish making these dang things, and then I'll take a picture, and I'll put it on the community here in... Uh, Facebook and I will also put it on the creative group and by the way if you're watching this and you don't know what the hey the creative group is I'm going to tell you and you want to come join us it's at Facebook so if you do Facebook come find us over there um, it is the Beast of Boutique's creative group we have nearly 6,000 members um, sometimes more active than not right now you know it's in that draggy part of the end of winter beginning of spring type thing and so but um everybody that's posted here today i think is in it and they're all very regular there but anyway what we do there is we show new techniques and stuff that we use with mixed media product and we show stuff that we've made with products that i carry okay so if you're using things that i carry then you're more than welcome to go ahead and post those pictures on the group. We want to see them. And not only that, when you finish that project, like you can fin you can like have stuff out on your table and show us what you're working with. Like we have an event every week, Work Table Wednesday, where you can post your table with Bisu stuff on it on a project you're working on or hope to work on soon. Okay, so then... We have to have 20, you pin them at Pinterest, and then I do the random number generator, and I give away a gift that's worth between $50 and $75 every week to one of those people. 
And believe me, you can win because usually only 20 to 30 people post. And we would like to see more come and post. So if you work with my products and stuff like that, come be a part of that because you can make out like a bandit. You could win. Now, most people have won more than once, you know. Um, so that's, we have that there. We have some other events on there too. We, we learn how to use different mixed media items and the products that I sell, which are a lot because I sell mixed media stuff. I sell tools. I sell brass stampings. I sell vintage parts, vintage cameos, vintage stones. I sell a lot of check stones. We sell a lot of wire. Javi is an excellent wire artist. And she's got some videos on this channel too. You might want to tune in to if you like. Why we have another cord, we have cord ends, uh, we have Tibetan castings, and we also have Bisuva 1928, which is my own proprietary line of cast parts that Mel Bernie makes for me out there at the factory at 1928 Jewelry. And he and I have enjoyed working together for some time now. And I have some new things coming up with that too that I'm going to want to tell you. So I'll tell you about that over at the creative group and I need your opinions too. So if you're listening to this at some other time when we're not live or you're just listening along and you're not talking, um, you haven't, if you haven't belonged to that yet, if you haven't joined us, please come. It's a very encouraging place to be. You don't have to buy my stuff. It's just like to, to, to post pictures and stuff you need to have my stuff. But you don't have to, we talk, we have all kinds of different discussions. So you can be part of that. If it's not the time for you to buy stuff, we understand. Just come and be part of it. It's like a family, really. It's more than community. It's like a family. So come and join us, okay? So thank you so much for coming. And we really appreciate your participation. And I will catch you the next time, which is next Friday. And we'll see what happens.